In this video, we're going to go over this shot and we're going to do it inside of 3D Studio Max. Let's jump right in. So here we are inside our scene. I just need this left one. So I'm going to delete all the other ones. I'm going to move it to the center and we're going to set up our camera, kind of have a flat horizon. And then I'm going to push in a bit, probably have to center this up a bit and rotate this guy. So I would say roughly around there is good. And we're just going to kind of come in and frame it up like we did in the promo. And we can always reference this shot, move that over like that. And if it's snapping too much when you rotate it, you can just hit S on the keyboard and that'll get rid of the snap. It snaps in five degree increments. So now you have a little bit more fine control here and you can kind of just line that up. If I reference this, this, this looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit control C on the keyboard, which is going to create a camera. Now, if I hit alt W, we can jump out of the single view and go back to the four quad split view. And we can see that the background is white. This is just something that whoever created this model set in the 3ds max viewport. So I'm just going to hit eight on the keyboard that brings up our environmental or background controls. And I can just click on the color and just bring it down to black. And now we can see the grid and we don't have a white background. So I'm going to set this quad, I'm going to set it to perspective view. So I can just hit P on the keyboard for that. And I'm noticing here that the point of interest on the camera is a little too far. So what I can do is come in here and find our point of interest or target distance and just decrease it. And you can also grab it here in the viewport once you can see it. It was hidden by the model, but once you can see it, you can grab it and adjust it that way. So I'm just going to put it right at the front of the model and we're going to rotate around and we're going to look here. If our view is not straight, then we can select our camera and we can move it around. But this is pretty good. But if you want to be a little exact, then you can just adjust it. So this line is perfectly straight. Now that we have our camera set up, we want to jump into our lighting. Now, if I hit render right now, we're not going to see anything because we don't have any lights set up. So I'm just going to bring up my layer explorer here. So that's good. Hit the plus button, add another layer. Uh, if we select all of them and then hit the plus button, that'll take everything that we selected and throw it in a layer. So it's a good way to stay organized. So I'll just name this AirPods. And then we have our camera here. Now we have two things, but it's part of one camera. We have the physical camera and we have the target. In order to actually move this, it's a two node camera. So if you just move the camera itself, it's going to rotate around the point of interest. That's sometimes what we want, but if you want to select both, hold control, click on that also and then now you can move the camera and it'll pan rather than rotate around the point of interest so that's just one thing to know and those two separate things are here so you can select them separately so i'm just going to take those two i'm going to hit plus and i created a new layer and i'm just going to rename this so i'll name it camera and i'm just going to create another layer to stay organized i'm going to name it lights so I'm going to keep that highlighted so that when we create a light from our V-Ray side panel here, I can click that and it'll automatically create the light in there. So I have to drag this light out. So I'm going to create kind of a large light here just to start off. And you'll see why I did that in a second. But if I drop down this menu here on the left, you can see that it created the V-Ray light inside of the lights layer. And don't worry if it creates it inside of another layer, like if it was in camera, you could just grab it and drag it into the light layer. So first thing I'm going to do is create the top light. I'm going to move this over and it's I'm centering it on top here. So you can see that it's centered on top of the light. Now, since the camera is here, I'm going to push this back. So it's a backlight. So Alt W bring us out. Now we can see here that the V-Ray light is basically right on top of this. So we want to move it up a little bit so it's not right on top. And I'm going to go into the light properties over here. And instead of multiplier 30, I'm just going to change it to 10 right now. That still might be a little bit bright, but we'll see what that looks like. So now I'm going to take the light and I'm going to hit E on the keyboard and rotate it so that it points at the AirPod and I'm going to move it over. So if I hit W, 
can just move, move that over. And now we kind of need to see what we're doing. So I'm going to start the V-Ray IPR. So I'm going to hit F10 on the keyboard and I'm going to go into V-Ray. If I want to start the IPR, I can just click on this button here, but I want to adjust the sub divs first because this is way too many for a quick preview. So I'm just going to do one and two. I may need to do one and four because it's going to be a lot of noise, but we'll just keep it at that for now and we'll see what happens. And our GI, we can enable it and just make sure it's set for still right now so that we don't calculate a lot of sub divs while we're doing the preview. So with that all set up, I'm gonna hit start IPR and it's gonna bring up the V-Ray IPR and I can just drag this over. One of the things that I'm noticing here is that when I switch viewports, it switches that view here also in the camera. So we want this to be locked to this camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the V-Ray IPR and I'm just gonna move this over for a second. I'm gonna go to our view over here and it says physical camera and that's what we want. So we'll just lock it. So now if we start the V-Ray IPR and we start jumping around to different viewports, it's always gonna be locked to the camera view. Uh, we can click on perspective viewport and it's not gonna change anything in our preview. So one of the things I'm noticing is that unlike our shot here, we have, see we have this um, rim light on the edge here and also over here. And then we have it also here and down to the side. One of the things I'm noticing is that this light is not creating that. So we can try to make it wider. So let's increase the length. Now, the thing is that we're going to have to make it extremely long and it's not really going to do what we want anyway. So if I just make this massively long, it's kind of ridiculous, but you can see that it's not really creating the effect that we want. So I'm even just gonna push it back a little bit just to get that better rim light. But if you compare it to this shot, you can really see that it's not really giving us the effect that we want here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate this into two lights. So we're gonna have a light creating the edge light or the rim light on this side, and then another light on this side. I'm just gonna shrink it down to be about that size. and I'm just gonna move it over to this side. So that's pretty good. And then we can rotate it. Then we can move it closer. Maybe like up and down. If we move it down, we get a little bit better of, um, of an edge light over here. So we're just kind of trying to position it so that it creates the edge light and shape that we want here. So that's looking pretty good. One of the things I'm noticing is it's kind of jaggy, so I'm just gonna enable mesh smooth. The light is clearly visible by the camera, so we can just click on the light and click on invisible here. And now we can't see the light, but it's still gonna affect our model and we'll still see the reflection. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt this video. I just wanna remind you to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, including more from this series where we go over all of the shots from this Apple AirPod spec promo, as well as future filmmaking and visual effects tutorials. All right, let's jump back into it. So now I'm gonna take this light. I'm gonna hold shift and drag out a new one and we'll make a copy. And now you can see that we have the reflection on this side. So if we move this over, we want this to kind of go down this whole side. So what I'm seeing here is that we need to hit Shift F. And one of the things I forgot to do here is change our resolution to be the proper resolution. So we're gonna go to our render settings and go to output size, click on HDTV. And we can keep it at 1280 by 720 for now because it's the same aspect ratio as 1920 by 1080. While we work, we can keep it on 1280 by 720. I'm gonna minimize that. So our camera is too low at the moment. So I'm going to select our point of interest and the camera and now move this up. And I'm gonna move the, the camera in. So I don't need to select the point of interest for that. I can just push the camera in. And there we go, we have a really nice shot here. Now, this edge light is not looking too bad, but it, you can see here that it's not on the edge anymore. It's kind of on the inner part. So what I wanna do actually is take this light and instead of having it in the same position as the other one, what we can do is we can rotate it. So we'll just rotate it down and then rotate it so it's pointing toward the AirPod. Move it into place here, so. And if we really wanna get crazy, we can rotate it this way 
Just be careful when you do this because you might get a weird edge light. But see, you see that slant that's on the light there. So just be careful when you do that because you don't want this edge to look weird. These lights are way too bright. So before I go and adjust everything, I want to place all my lights. So let's go in and let's just put in another light. So I'm going to take a disc light. If we look at our reference this shape here is not really from a rectangle it's more from a disc but this weird shape because it's the curvature of the body kind of deforms the shape so we just want to take this um disc light and we'll draw it here and we'll just kind of move it up and now you can see we're lighting up the front this is way too bright so let's go with five because we do want it to be darker in the front than than the edge lights are so i'll move this around and you can see that when i put this and i'm just going to move it around until it kind of matches what we have in our reference which is roughly around there right it's too bright so i'm just going to take the multiplier i'm going to drop it down to one and we'll see what that does and that's looking pretty good already now if we wanted we could make this bigger and also rotate it so it's facing facing the airpod here and i'm just going to move it over to the right slightly and let's move it a little closer and up we're just placing our reflections at the moment here so we can kind of maybe move this out a little bit so it's a little bit more in the center so at least we see some of the shape and we can see that there's a little bit of shadow here because we want to kind of keep that and that's why it's kind of important for this light to maybe be a little bit more on top here. So this is looking good. It's just our light levels are all messed up. So instead of 10 here, let's go with five and let's take this one and we'll drop this down to five and then this one will drop down to 0.5. These edge lights are really hot, so I'm just gonna keep on clicking down until they're not insanely bright white, as we can see here. So that's getting a little bit better. So I'd say somewhere around three to three and a half. So I'm just gonna change this one also to three. But I think this one probably needs to be 3.5. Let's try 3.5 for this one too. But we're kind of at the point where I would say this shot is really close to what we had here. So that's pretty good. I mean, we can mess around with this all we want, but this is basically pretty close to what we had in the original promo. So I'm going to stop the V-Ray IPR here. What I'm going to do is actually set this up so that it's not so noisy. You can see it's a lot of, it's kind of crunchy here in the shadows. It's really noisy. I'm just going to set this up. I'll hit F10 to bring up our render settings here. So F10. We'll click over to V-Ray and we'll come in here and now we have really low subdivs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do two and maybe might do six, but let's just do eight just in case. I mean, this is really not going to take long to render, so we can even do 10. And then for animation, we can just switch this over to animation. That gives us 3000 subdivs and that should be enough. So I'm just actually going to hit F9 to render it. Just to test, I'm going to click Enable Built-in Frame Buffer so that we can use the V-Ray Frame Buffer. Now let's hit F9. This is looking good. I think that's pretty good, actually. And then if we wanted to, we can turn on the Denoiser. So we can just go to V-Ray Denoiser and just enable that. But the Denoiser is going to do a nice job of cleaning a lot of that up. And so it's a really clean image. But one of the other things we want to do is add the V-Ray Z-Depth so that we can add a shallow depth of field. So just enable that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And one of the things that I haven't done yet that we had in the original animation is this slight camera movement. So we can actually go in and let's click our, we should have done this at the beginning, but let's click our stopwatch, switch it over to film. If we wanted, we can render this for slow motion. So we could do 60 or 48 frames per second. I'm just going to do 24 because I'll time the camera movement with the speed that I want. So that's fine. So I'm just going to take our camera now, we'll click on the camera and click on the point of interest and we'll click auto key and set a keyframe. We're going to go 70 frames. Let's go 80. We're just going to move this down. So somewhere around there. Now, if I play this back, we can kind of see the speed and that's pretty good. 
Now, one of the things I'm noticing is that it starts slow, speeds up, and then as it comes to this last keyframe here, it starts to slow down, and that's because we have Easy Ease keyframes. If you're familiar with After Effects, I don't really know what they call them in 3ds Max, but we can just click on this button here to bring up our graph. We'll select both of these keyframes, and we'll just kind of zoom in here. And I just moved up and down, so that's the Z-axis. So we'll just select these. Let's zoom in here so you can see it. You can see that there's these easy ease curves or these ease curves here. So we'll just select all of those and we'll click on this button here for linear. So it'll set tangents to linear. And now we have a linear movement instead of ease keyframes. So we can close this down, play this back. We might have to slow this down by moving this to 100. Just play this back. Make sure your physical camera viewport is selected and we'll just hit the slash button, backslash on the keyboard, and that'll play it. We'll just select our camera and just move from 80 to 100. And now we can just shut off auto key, hit home. So we jump back to the start of our timeline and press backslash and that's looking good. And I'm just gonna go into our time settings and go from 125 to 100, hit okay. Now to render this out, we'll just go into our render setup, go to common. Well, we can do active time segment because we set it from zero to 100. But if you didn't and you want to select the range, just do range from zero to 100. And that'll work too, but I'll just set it to active time segment. We can check some of our other settings here. So I want to render two separate render channels. So I'll click that. It's going to save the RGB and the alpha. And then also it's going to save the V-Ray Z depth and a denoise pass back to V-Ray. Select the path where we want to save it. The reason why I'm putting the underscore there is because 3ds Max is going to automatically number it. So I'll just switch this to OpenEXR. We can hit setup, but if we just hit save, it's automatically going to open the setup for us. And then here we can choose our format. So I'll just do 16 bit for this um, RGB alpha and make sure to add the denoiser and the Z depth pass here and just um, make sure they're both enabled and hit OK. And now we can just render this out and we'll have our final animation ready for After Effects. In the next video, we're gonna be going over the same shot, but we're gonna do it inside of Blender. So all you guys who don't use 3ds Max and you use Blender, this is gonna be for you. Once again, thanks for watching. My name is Paul Dovecchio and I'll see you next time.